Hello Grade 8s, this is Mr. Miller, and welcome to Lesson 7.1 on Understanding Volume. So when measuring a length, we often use centimeters, although millimeters are sometimes used for objects that are shorter than a centimeter, and meters are sometimes used if you've got something that's longer than 100 centimeters, and kilometers are sometimes used when you've got something that's longer than 1,000 meters. <coughs> So when you're measuring area, the units we use are often square centimeters or centimeters squared, although you can use square millimeters when you've got something that's smaller. Square meters can be used and square kilometers can be used for larger things. We read cm with this 2 here as centimeters squared or square centimeters. And so it's easy to understand area as the answer to the question, how many squares fit inside this two-dimensional object? So for example, the area of the rectangle below is a certain number of square units. And one way that you can figure that out is simply by counting them. So you could count them individually, one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. <sighs> Boy, so obviously that's getting a little silly. More efficient would be to do 8 times 5 is 40. <clears throat> Right. Length times width for a rectangle will give you its area. Note that u squared, okay, so when it has listed u squared here, the u squared is square units. It's used when it's an unknown when it's unknown whether the squares are one centimeter by one centimeter or something else. And it wasn't indicated here exactly the size of these squares. <clears throat> so u squared is for general uh, square units. And we can calculate it by doing the number of rows times the number of columns, so length times width, as I indicated here. When measuring volume, we often use cubic centimeters, although cubic millimeters are sometimes used if you've got smaller volumes, and cubic meters and cubic kilometers are sometimes used for larger volumes. One cubic centimeter is equivalent to a milliliter. That's another thing that's good to know. And so another unit for measuring volume is liters. We read cm with this 3 here as cubic uh, centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters, and so it's also called cc. And so it's easy to understand volume as the answer to the question how many cubes fit inside this three dimensional object? So, for example, the volume of the rectangular prism shown below is, and it's a rectangular prism that I've put together myself by stacking up some dice. Now if you count these individually you'd notice that there are six on the top layer and there's another six in the bottom layer for a total of 12 cubic units. <clears throat> Note here that the u cubed u cubed, cubic units, is used when it is unknown whether the cubes are one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter or whether it's something else. So we can calculate this volume instead of having to count individual cubes uh, by doing the number of cubes on the bottom level. So the number of cubes on the bottom level you can see here is it is six and this six cubes on the bottom 
is equivalent to finding the area on the bottom here, or in other words, the area of the base. And then if you multiply by how many levels we have stacked up, which is, in other words, the height, okay, so right here, this is the height. So knowing that there are six cubes on each level and multiplying by the number of levels will give you the total number of cubes we have in total. So in other words, to get 12, to get 12, you could do six times two. So there's six on the bottom level times two levels where there are six each in each level. And so this hopefully helps you to understand why the volume of a prism as well as cylinders is the area of the base, or in other words, the number of cubes that you'd find <clears throat> in the bottom level times the height, or in other words, the number of levels. So now we're going to be using that formula on the next page in order to determine the volume of each prism. So to find the volume, we are going to use area of base times height. And you can see here, <clears throat> that the area of the base is 500 square centimeters. And so in that area, there would be 500 little cubic centimeters. And if we multiply by 10 centimeters, this gives us the number of levels that there are. And that gives us 5,000 cubic centimeters. <clears throat> this is the volume. Now, when you get such a large number, often students start thinking about, well, could I convert it to something else? And certainly you could. So you could indicate, since this is 5,000 cubic centimeters, the same thing as 5,000 milliliters. And so converting milliliters into liters, you could just divide by 1,000 and get 5 liters. Um, but it's not absolutely necessary to get into the details of that right now. The main thing we're just getting used to is practicing this formula which is volume of a prism is equal to the area of the base times the height and so for the next one <clears throat> we have that the area of the base is 300 and the height is equal to 25 and if you multiply those two things together you will get 7500 cubic centimeters. And for the next one, we have a triangular prism. So we've been dealing with rectangular prisms in the first two examples. This one is a triangular prism. So the key thing with prisms to remember is that the base is the face that gives it its name. So this is a triangular prism, the base is a triangle. So when I say find the area of the base, I am actually meaning to find the area of the triangle. Base doesn't necessarily mean bottom, and it's certainly not the case here. So you would do 595, which is the area of the triangle, and that is the base. We multiply by eight so this is the height and this is something that may be a little bit confusing initially you think uh, that this should be the height right and no that's not the case so this is the height right here and the important thing to remember is that the height is the distance between the two bases so again the base is the face that gives it its name. This is a triangular prism, so the base is a triangle. The opposite end is also a triangle. How far apart are those two bases? Eight centimeters apart. 
So now, let's finish this off. Doing that multiplication will give you a volume of 4,760 cubic centimeters. <clears throat> now, if you are understanding um, what we've done here in number one, you may want to try some of the exercises that follow on your own. You could always pause the video, give them a shot yourself, and then play them and uh, see if you're right. But if you're not sure how to do it, then by all means just keep playing the video and you can see how it all goes. So, in number two, we want to find the volume of box A, <clears throat> and its volume is equal to Again, we keep using the same formula here. It's the area of the base times the height. So the area of the base is 384. And we're multiplying by the height, which is 12. So if you multiply those two things, you would get a volume of 4,608 cubic centimeters. Now let's see what we get for the volume of box B. So this volume is the area of the base times the height. So same formula, but we've got different numbers in this one. The area of the base is 192 square centimeters. We want to multiply by the height, which is 24 centimeters. And this would give you 4,608 cubic centimeters as well. <clears throat> so now it's asking, are their volumes the same? And yes, they are. So then it says to explain. So it's easy to see why this would be the case because although in box B we have doubled the height, you can see that the area of the base is half of what the area of the base for box A is. So just writing out that explanation because while box A has twice the area of the base of box B, <clears throat> it has half of the height of box B. So going on to number three here, being asked to calculate the volume of the cylinder. Now, to do the volume of a cylinder, a cylinder is very similar to <clears throat> all of the prisms um, because it's got those two opposite ends that are exactly equivalent. And if you take a look at the lateral areas, they're all rectangles. Um, but uh, so that means that we can use this area of base times height formula and to what well, we we are actually given the area of the base here it is 10 square centimeters so we can just multiply by the height which is 12 and 10 times 12 gives us 120 cubic centimeters for the volume so we just got a few questions to go here moving on to number 4 says, what is the height of each rectangular prism? So normally we are calculating volume from the area of the base and multiplying by the height. Um, but this time we want to calculate the height from the volume and the area of the base. So that means you have to divide to work backwards here. So doing 108 divided by 12 that will give you 9 centimeters for the height of the first one. And in the second one, it would be 80 divided by 16, which would give you 5 centimeters for the height. And just careful because they did switch these up here. <clears throat> it's 110 cubic centimeters for the volume here, dividing by the area of the base. Um, that's 110, and 110 divided by 110 is 1 centimeter for the height of that prism. 
And the last question that we've got to do here says, the canola oil company is designing cans for its oil. Their cans hold one liter, which is 1,000 cubic centimeters. The area of the base of their can is 80 centimeters squared. We want to know how tall is the can. And we're going to show our answer to one decimal place. So again, the height is equal to the volume divided by the area of the base, as we indicated in number four. And so we can take the volume, which is one liter or a thousand cubic centimeters, and divide by the area of the base, which is 80 square centimeters, and this will give you 12.5 centimeters for the height. So you can write that in a sentence. The can is 12.5 centimeters tall. So that's the end of this lesson. Hope you understood that. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.